The operation of the wood chipper is subject to certain hazards that may cause death or serious physical harm. Therefore, all Altec chippers are designed for use by trained, qualified, and competent adult personnel only. Our chippers are not intended for use by children, supervised or unsupervised. The operator must ensure all unauthorized personnel are kept clear of the chipper during operation. Hi, I'm Darren Hintergaard with Altec Industries. I'm going to spend a few minutes explaining the basic operating procedures for the Altec DC610 six inch control feed brush chipper. When used properly, these chippers will give you many productive hours of operation. All Altec chippers are equipped with several key safety features. But remember, safe work practices should always be your first priority. If these practices are not followed, the chipper is capable of inflicting serious injury and or death. Keep in mind this video is to familiarize you with Altec's DC610 and is not a substitute for general training are completely reading and understanding the operator's manual and safety instructions. It's critical that all operators completely read and understand all operations manuals and safety placards before being allowed to operate, transport, or place material into the chipper. The manual is found in the manual pouch installed on the chipper. The DC610 is a 6 inch control feed disc chipper. This model uses hydraulic feed motors to pull the material into the machine at a controlled rate. Your specific unit may also be equipped with various options that may not be covered. Although many aspects of the chipper operation and maintenance are similar, you must familiarize yourself with the specific differences between your chipper and the one demonstrated here, or other chippers that you may have utilized previously. The DC610 is a disc style chipper with a 6 inch maximum capacity. It has a 6 inch high by 10 inch wide feed opening and uses a 25 inch diameter cutting disc that is an inch and a quarter thick. This disc rotates at a factory setting of 1900 RPMs. Before operating, it's important you be trained in the safe operation of this unit. Make sure you read, understand, and follow the safety and operating recommendations contained in the operator's manual supplied by the unit's manufacturer, your employer's work rules, and all applicable government regulations. You should also take the time to familiarize yourself with the precautionary and instructional decals on the machine. The terms danger, warning, caution, and notice represent varying degrees of personal injury and or property damage that could result from your not following the preventative instructions. Each day, before beginning your work, make sure you conduct a pre-operational check as outlined in your operator's manual. With the engine off and key removed, perform your pre-operational check. This check should include at a minimum all fluid levels, including engine oil, fuel, and hydraulic oil. Remember, when checking these fluids, make sure you clear the exhaust at all times. Conduct a visual inspection of the unit for any loose or damaged components. Pay particular attention to pins, fasteners, and welds, along with guards and hoses. Check for fluid leaks on your chipper. And if you find a leak, contact a qualified mechanic. Remember, never use your hand or any part of your body to check for leaks on a pressurized system. The fluid can become ejected under the skin, causing severe injury. If this happens, seek medical attention immediately. Verify the discharge chute is clear and directed away from all personnel. When the discharge chute is in proper position, secure with the locking mechanism provided. Be sure to cordon off the area around the discharge chute to prevent unauthorized personnel from entering. Now you're ready to operate the chipper. Remember to set the parking brake and check the wheels of the towing vehicle. Before setting up the chipper, walk around the job site and identify any potential hazards that may be related to the job. When positioning the unit for operation, be sure to take the following safety steps. Ensure the area surrounding the feed area of the chipper is clear of obstructions and trip hazards. It's important to maintain this clean area in the event the debris accumulates during chipper operation and staging. When leaving the chipper detached for storage or dumping the chip body, use the jack stand and wheel chocks. Always remove the ignition keys when the chipper is unattended. If the chipper is attached to the vehicle, survey the area for power lines and be sure the unit is set up to maintain the minimum approach distances specified by OSHA. 
Never set the unit up on excessive slopes, in ditches, or around obstructions. Never set up directly below the tree being trimmed, and also ensure no one is working above the chipper. Be sure the area around the chipper is clear of flammable material. Under some circumstances, the engine exhaust is capable of starting fires. Before we start the chipper, let's discuss fueling the chipper. Remember, fuels are highly flammable and fuel liquid or vapors can adversely affect your health. First, turn off all ignition sources to include the chipper and tow vehicle. Keep the fuel away from flames or sparks. Before pouring, discharge potential static electric charge buildup by touching the chipper metal away from the gas tank with your hand. Remove the cap. Fill the fuel tank leaving a gap at the top of the tank for fuel expansion. Reinstall the cap and place the gas can in a safe location. Remember, all persons working close to the chipper shall wear appropriate clothing and personal protective equipment as outlined in the operator's manual and required by OSHA. Remove all gear and accessories that may become entangled in the chipper. Some examples are chaps, safety harnesses, climbing equipment lanyards, and gauntlet type gloves. Inspect your PPE, which may include head, foot, eye, gloves, hearing protection, and tear away reflective vest, repairing or replacing any defective or damaged equipment. Ensure the feed control bar is in the middle or neutral position. Ensure the discharge chute is clear of obstructions and properly positioned and secured. The chute should always be directed away from workers and any possible bystanders. Lower the feed table. Ensure the chip deflector curtain is properly installed. Never stow items on the feed table. Now it's time to start the chipper. This chipper is provided with an engine that has a centrifugal clutch which engages automatically at the approximate mid-range of the throttle control. Move the throttle control to the slow position. Pull out the choke control to the closed position. Turn the electric switch to the on start position. Let the engine warm up for 30 seconds. Stop if any unusual sounds are heard or if the disc does not begin to rotate as the engine speed increases. Shut the engine down and return to the rental agency. Now that the clutch is engaged and the cutter is running smoothly, increase the RPM to the maximum setting. For proper chip discharge, always operate the chipper at this RPM. Before feeding brush or limbs into the chipper, test the panic bar for proper operation. Ensure the panic bar handle is vertical or in the engaged position. Move the feed control bar to the feed position. The feed rollers will start moving. Then pull the panic bar to the disengage position. The feed rollers should stop moving. The panic bar should also stop the feed rollers when operating in reverse. In the event the feed rollers should not immediately stop when the panic bar is activated, shut down the chipper engine and return to the rental agency. It's important to note that activating the panic bar does not stress the equipment and that shall be activated in any event that threatens the operator or machine. To reset the panic bar, pull the black panic bar reset knob towards the curd side and allow the panic bar to reset to its original position. Take the feed bar from neutral back to the feed position. This will allow the feed wheels to turn. The control bar is used to advance, to stop, or reverse the feed roller. Next, we'll cover brush preparation. For materials such as stones, cans, metal objects such as nails or wire, or vines wrapped around limbs, must be removed from the brush before it's fed into the chipper. This will reduce the danger of flying debris and will extend the life of the chipper's cutting knives. Once the brush has been trimmed and prepared, you're ready to feed the brush into the chipper. When trimming branches, it will aid the feeding process if cuts are made at an angle when possible. The proper brush feeding technique involves placing the brush on the feed table, pushing it into the feed roller, and moving quickly to the side of the chipper, all in one continuous motion. Never reach into the feed opening for any reason, including the feeding of short material. Approach from the side at an angle that will not position you directly behind, but to the side of the feed table in order to avoid brush kickback and traffic hazards. Next, lay the brush on the feed table large end toward the feed roller, push the brush until the feed roller grabs the brush. Release the brush immediately and continue moving to the side of the chipper. 
If feeding short pieces of brush, lay them on top of a larger branch, or if short pieces are laying on the feed table, feed a larger branch which will drag the shorter pieces to the feed roller. Keep in mind that no portion of the body should pass the deflector curtain. The DC-610 is equipped with Altec feed sense. This innovative system electronically controls the feed rate of the chipper. FeedSense continually monitors the speed of the cutting mechanism in order to maintain the optimal cutting RPMs, reducing the need to manually control the feed with the control bar. This feature increases productivity and operator safety. Please note, when the FeedSense is activated, the material will start and stop automatically, so there's no need to manually move the feed bar. While feeding brush into the chipper, there are several things you need to remember. If feeding a large diameter branch, Feed a small branch first to open the feed roller, then feed the larger branch. Always keep the area behind the feed table clear. Loose branches or limbs may cause a tripping hazard. Never use any tool with metal components, such as a rake or a pruning pole, to push brush into the feeder. It may be caught in the feed roller and fed into the chipper, where the metal could damage the knives and anvil and become a flying projectile. Don't feed brush top end first. You may become tangled and pulled into the chipper. Never stand on the feed table or try to push small pieces in with your hands or feet. Never feed vines into the chipper. Materials, clothing, or personnel may become entangled and pulled into the unit. If the chipper becomes clogged, shut down the chipper unit and return it to the rental agency. Finally, we'll outline the proper shutdown procedure. Before beginning the shutdown procedure, ensure that all brushes cleared the discharge chute and the feed opening is clear. To shut down the chipper, place the feed control bar in its neutral position. Reduce engine speed to slow. Allow engine and disc RPM time to stabilize. Turn off the ignition key. Remember, do not leave the chipper unattended until the cutting mechanism has completely stopped. Now let's discuss towing the chipper. Confirm the tow vehicle rating and that it's properly equipped for towing this type of equipment. When towing the chipper, connect the tow bar to the vehicle. Ensure the jack stand is operating properly, then secure the stand in the travel position. Cross the safety chains under the tow bar and connect them to the vehicle. Plug in the trailer lights and perform a lights test. Ensure the connector wires and chains have sufficient length to allow for turning the vehicle. Check the tire pressure. Make sure the feed table is in the folded and locked position. Ensure the discharge chute is secured in the forward position and there's proper clearance between the chute and tow vehicle. Before travel, be sure you know the clearance height of the vehicle and the chipper relative to overhead obstructions such as power lines, bridges, and awning such as found at fuel stations. Pre-planning your route of travel can help avoid these types of obstructions. And if you must park in the roadway, park on the right hand side of the road facing the direction of traffic flow. Whenever possible, leave at least 15 feet between the edge of your vehicle and the traveled road surface. If you must park closer, appropriate warning devices must be used. Depending on local, state, or federal requirements, this may include warning lights, reflectors, warning signs, traffic cones, flags, or a flag person. And those are the basic operating procedures for the Altec Control Feed Brush Chippers. Let's review a few important items. First, ensure that you and all potential operators have read and understand the operator's manual supplied with the unit. Next, conduct a visual walk around inspection of the unit before operating. Check all decals for legibility and proper placement on the chipper. Make sure the work site is surveyed for hazards and test the unit safety features before operation. Finally, follow all operating procedures for unit operation and unit shutdown. Remember, use good judgment and respect the potential safety hazards because your safety always comes first. If you have any questions, feel free to call Altec Environmental Products at 1-800-958-2555 or your Altec Century Safety Department at 205-408-8260.
You can also visit us at our website at altech.com.